Welcome back to the channel. Thanks so much for joining me. Good looking and happy holidays if I haven't already said that. Today is going to be a little bit of a swatch and a mini declutter hopefully. I think I've reached the point of my life where I don't feel the need to keep all of this stuff. I don't feel like I need to be the keeper of all these shadows and I want to open up this drawer and look at it and see all the shadows that I know and love and use and then also have space so that if I want to add something to my collection, I can and it can be something that I really truly, you know, will enjoy. And some of these I just don't use anymore. Some of them like aren't made anymore. And so I just feel like it's time that we go through it. And I don't know if it's a result of doing a year long no buy or if it is more of a just I'm feeling like purging but I want to go through some of these shadows and keep what I'm going to use declutter what I'm not going to use and then hopefully there will be a little bit more space made so that I can someday add some more to my collection all right so I've got actually I also grabbed out this one this drawer as well because there's singles in here. This is kind of going to be like hair stuff, but there's also singles and whatnots in here that I want to go through. So um, let's start. I don't think you can see, but in the corner here, I've got the NARS Madrid. I don't use this. And it's such a weird, like, topper formula. I have used it a couple times, but I don't typically use it. I will hang on to it. Um, I know I purchased it at TJ Maxx, so it's not like a full price item. But I think for right now, I'm going to hang on to it just so I have kind of like a formulation thing. But I'm, I'm strongly considering decluttering this puppy. Maybe this should just be... Stuff that I'm going to keep. Like I pick it out, I swatch it, and then everything else I'll just like dump in a bin for declutter. I know I want to keep this Laura Mercier um, eyeshadow. It's really pretty. I think there's a way to get it out. Yeah. There's a way to... Um, yeah, you can... You can't really depot it, but I guess you can kind of take it. I don't know what the purpose of this would be. Maybe she has at some point like had pans that you could fill these in. I don't know. I, I, I really don't get it. I do like the color though. I do really like the color a lot. Um, I know I want to keep this. This is Blossom Glow. I just need to figure out um, where I'm going to store it and how I'm going to store it. Then I know I'm also going to keep these. So these are my Makeup Geek blushes. Maybe I don't want to keep them. I just don't know. And then this is a Physician's Formula Translucent Pearl. I do use, I have used this. This is the Precious Petals one. Yeah, from Wet n Wild. I don't think it is um, stainless steel, so I don't think it would sit in a magnetic palette. These do, though. They're like the same size. That's interesting. I wonder if I could put this in a Makeup Geek pan. Oh, wow, that's cool. I did not know that. Well, it's like somewhat. You know what? I might try fitting that into a Makeup Geek. Okay. This is another sponge, so spare sponge. Yeah, definitely going to keep that. No. I've had them for a while. They don't have the clear lid. I'm not going to keep it. This right here is all hair stuff. So that it, technically this is going to be my hair drawer once I um, declutter. I do want to keep Max Espresso. I know that. It's a pretty decent shade. Why is this in here? I'll never know, but that needs to go. Okay. This is Sydney Grace's Kaleidoscope. Uh, 
probably not going to. I pressed it or I attempted to press it and I don't know how successful I would consider that. I mean, I still have it, but I'm probably going to keep this just because I don't know that the pressed version is really going to be worth it. These I think I'm going to get rid of. But man, these lids are like really pretty. Even to this day, that gunmetal gray, that Makeup Geek logo, like... Leave a comment down below if you are still like in shock, sad that Makeup Geek is gone. I think it might be gone. Okay, I pressed these and they did not, they didn't do well at all. But this is kind of like an original OG formula, so I do like it. I reached in it the other day and I used some of these. I think it was Sugar Rush. It was like an inner corner highlight. I just, I don't know. It's so hard to get rid of. Once you start swatching all the beautiful stuff, it's like, it's just so hard to get rid of, you know, and especially something with a past like that and something you know you can't get anymore. It's kind of hard. That, I really want to just reuse this glass, but I don't want this. Anymore. No, it's going. It's going. Going, going, gone. This is, oh, I used this, and I meant to use it again, but I used it last. Um, Christmas time, I think it was. I wouldn't mind pressing it, but I don't know. It's just a sample size of a loose pigment. And I could press it, I bet, but I just don't, I don't think I'm going to. It's from Fierney, which it looks like it has enough binder in it. Okay, these I kept because of the formulation. I, I mean, I just used them recently. This is a single I already have, and I thought I was going to give that to somebody, and I don't remember who. So, actually, I've got a place for that. Okay. We need to start. I don't know. This is an easy declutter. This is the Bare Minerals. Like, they don't make these pigments anymore, and it's a mess, and it's like, what would you even make? You can barely see it. <laughs> Plus, it would not look good on my eyes either. Pacific Heights. Can you see that there? Pacific Heights. <sighs> Abracadabra. Man, it's just so wild to think that this is a company that's no longer around. And this was like one of the revolutionary, like six years ago, I think it was when she released these duochromes, and they... You know, of course, they did get some flack. But, you know, it's like she was out there. She was doing it, you know. I didn't get enough. Not for my type of swatch party. I don't think this is a duochrome, is it? No. I think I can let it go. I think I need to. I have this one pressed in a eyeshadow pan. I could probably remove the sticker and let this go. I think I will. I think I'm starting to like get over the idea that, you know, there's going to be makeup that goes out of business or disappears or ages out, if you will. This is blush. This is a bare mineral. This is one of the first like pieces of single eyeshadow pigments that I started collecting, and it's just very cumbersome. Yeah, I can let it go. There it is. It's okay, you know, because once I open this up and I see. Oh, I know, I threw away all these because I think I lost, they dented and I lost a bunch of backings and they were really cheap, so I threw those away. Here's Sugar Rush. Oh my goodness. Sugar Rush. Like, it's hard to think 
that this never, first of all, this never like made it to like a pressed pigment formula. And secondly, like, <sighs> come on, it's not that, it's not that bad. It was like she could have recovered, you know? A part of me wishes that she would have sold the company who, you know, to somebody who was a little bit younger, a little bit more innovative. Not a little bit more innovative than her. I feel like Marilena was very innovative, but just somebody that could have a fresh set of eyes. Um, I do have this pressed. It doesn't look nearly as impressive as it does in this. I do want to keep this one. I have used it a couple times as an inner corner highlight. And I don't have that many iridescent um, like duos and multis. So I, I'm okay. I want to keep it. Voodoo is a really, really bad... <sighs> formulated green. I've tried pressing it like two or three times. It doesn't, it doesn't press very good. Neither does it like swatch. Okay. That just kind of like embarrassed me. Well, you can see it. See how it's like streaky. I'm gonna let it go. I'm gonna let it go. It's time. We have greens in the you know, the indie world that are way better. This is a good one. This is wildfire. I love it. It is that classic pink peach duochrome with the gold. Um, I'm going to keep it. It's Actually, I don't have too terribly many of these, I don't think. And the palette that I did have it in, I think I got rid of it. This is Inglot's 124. This is gifted to me. I love this shade. Love it. Um, I have pressed it. I'll give you guys a swatch. It's gorgeous. Beautiful. Love it. Like this, does this not scream Christmas? Holiday cheer? <laughs> Go to the grocery store, you could wear this even. I mean, I would. Intermission. Ooh, this is going to be a difficult one. Oops, because again, this is kind of like we have these shades already, don't we? We have them. We don't need a loose pigment form. I don't know. I think I have a Sydney Grace single. So I think I'd be okay to get rid of it. So, and I, you know what? I might have even pressed this one. It looks like it, there's enough out of it that's gone. I might have pressed it. This is the only Nomad Cosmetics that I own. I did buy all four of their singles from something. I don't remember what it was. The Stockholm bundle. I think it came with a palette and some singles. These did not impress me much, but I don't think they impressed very many other people. I mean, they're not terrible, but like they're also not very shimmery. They're more of a satin. Um... And I did think that they were like more of a fluorescent color and they're not. So I've always wanted to take the shadows out and just use the box because I do kind of like the idea. Let me get a pan size for one of these because I'd be curious to see if you could put like a magnetic sheet and then use this. Actually, you would be able to use this as a single. It fits in there nicely. However, what size is it? I think it's a 30 millimeter. Seems like it's about a 30 millimeter pan anyways. Um, I'm sure I'm not quite at the diameter. I could just probably go like a little bit bigger. I think it's about 30 millimeter. Uh, you know, what would it even take to pop one of these bad boys out? Like, I'm not here to destroy makeup, but let me just destroy some makeup. These are aluminum, uh, oops, <laughs> oopsie daisy. The other thing is, is I don't have a whole lot of pans like this or shadows this size. Okay, so we got it. Is it easy? I don't care if I destroy it. 
like I've let that that kind of go oh wow she's in there pretty good there you have it folks that is out I mean I could technically I could technically repress it but see the problem is the pan is now like dented so then you kind of have that it might never really fit in there nicely um, I think I might keep like one or two of these just so that I could like display a single eyeshadow. So like, let's say I was making a, my BYOP and I wanted to just display like, yeah, I think that that would look really good. And, you know, maybe find some shadows for like dupes for the Charlotte Tilbury Smoky Quartz and the you know the pop shots that would be kind of cool so what I would do now is just go ahead and probably actually trace this pan cut it out as circular as I possibly could well you know here's the thing is I've been meaning to grab another couple of these cutters because they're really not that expensive they're only like a few dollars at Hobby Lobby this won't be exact we Correct. Oops. It'll be close enough though, I feel like. Like talk about destroying makeup. Yeah. 29.77. So it's like, how many inches is that? It's 1.2 inches or, you know, 1.19 inches, something like that. So, I mean, I don't no, I think that they might sell something a little bit larger at the craft store that I could pick up as like a paper punch and then just punch out a magnetic sheet for this. But in the meantime, you could always just lay down, you know, one that you've sized and cut out and stuff. Um, and then you would have a little compact, you know, this is just a sticker. I mean, this is painted on, but I, I am willing to bet, like, I, I obviously don't, dislike no matter anything like that so I wouldn't I don't really care but if you wanted to be like ultra chic or whatever you could just take some acetone and I bet it would just wipe right off I think that's just like a paint that's on there so I mean you know I don't care enough about it to do that and I don't mind having a nomad you know palette type of thing like that but you know maybe in the future if you have some of these and you don't use them anymore there you go options just wanting to show you guys also these see they were like not they were not good at all I don't know these were like some of the very first ever that one looks pretty, but I feel like I have that a few times over. And I'm not a huge satin fan from, from this color, so I'm going to keep them. going to depot the shadows and put some magnetic adhesive in them and then um, use them as little, like, you know, duping the vibes of the higher end singles, you know. Okay, this is a refer box. I don't need it anymore. I kept it for a while. I think it was for like some sort of show and tell thing. Okay, that's gonna go in the trash as well because I don't need that laying around. All right, next. This is a an eyeshadow palette. Um, the shades do come out of the back. They're 30 millimeter pans though. These are, this is like a, kind of like a satiny formula. This is, I don't have anything like this in my collection, to be honest with you. I do like this taupey gray. Um, and I can take the pans out and use this as an empty magnetic palette. But I will say, like, I've been wanting to try and cut this so that I can make it like a five pan. And I tried it with another one of these from this brand and it, it did not work. I couldn't get it cut. I think that's why this is in here, <laughs> to be honest with you. It's probably some project I was working at at one time and then got pulled away from. Okay, um, these are going to have to go. I think I'm going to try and save the stickers off the back if I have them um, 
pressed though. So let's go ahead and move on. I'm gonna kind of just, these are, this is just glue. I, I mean, I use it. That's not something that I really like try to hoard or anything. These are eyeshadows that I do not use. Let me get my hands clean and then we'll swatch some of them. I'll show you what I mean. Three hours later, but only a moment in time for you guys. <laughs> okay, these I bought at Walmart for 97 cents a piece and I thought they were going to be like awesome singles. Turns out I don't think they sell this anymore. If they do, it's not really worth even 97 cents when you could just buy a palette that is you know, so much better. It is not magnetic. I don't think it doesn't look like it. So I'm, I'm good. I'm gonna let them go. Um, I've had them long enough. They are, I, I have a, I'll link it up here, but it's a single shadow tutorial using these shadows and you know, I had a lot of fun with them, but I'm ready to let them go. I have the video that shows them off and I don't feel the need to keep them anymore and this is going to free up so much space you know and I I want to look ahead and like rather than keeping something that's like mediocre or less than I'm going to let it go and now I have space for something that's like really great and wonderful and something I'm, I'm going to reach for and use and get a lot of happiness and joy I use this over the summer to be honest with you and I was trying to depot it you can see right there and it didn't work because I thought this would make like a really cool tin of some sort. But I do actually use it because it's really cool by itself. You know, the shadows by themselves and it's really cool to mix it all together. It makes it kind of like a, it's sort of like a terracotta color, but it's just an LA Colors beauty pot. I got it from Dollar Tree at one point and I, I have used it, so I don't mind it. All right. Here's another LA Colors. These are matte eyeshadows. I thought I was, you know, possibly going to maybe depot them. I'm pretty sure they're not magnetic. Let me just go grab my magnet to double check to make sure that these are not magnetic. Okay. Yep, nothing. Um, you know, I used them in a video that was featured on my channel like almost three years ago now. It's hard to believe I've been on YouTube for almost three years, but... I'm okay letting them go because I have the video showcasing them and I, you know, I like them, but I don't need them anymore. I don't need them. I have these colors and I'm obviously, you know, I'm a bargain hunter and so I got them for really cheap. This was something that, oh, and I use these as decoys for my kids to like, you know, dig into and when they were younger and didn't really know, like some of this stuff is really expensive. And so... I would give them these little guys and tell me, you know, like paint me a picture or you can put makeup on or whatever. And so that's what they would use. But now they've grown up. They don't do that anymore. I don't need these really. And, you know, it's not like a great and wonderful formula either. It's just like some matte eyeshadows that... I found at my local Dollar General. There is one particular shade. I think it's this one. French vanilla. That I used to use all the time. And it kind of looks like creme brulee from Wet n Wild. Which they still make that. So I mean I've got something I can link. I don't need these anymore. This has turned into a declutter video. But that's okay. It's not a bad formula. But again it's like I have this. I have this shade don't I? Do I? All right. Anyways, it's it's gonna go bye bye. I'm gonna stick it over here in the pile to go bye bye. Cause look how much, look how much room I have now. I have all this room, and rather than being overwhelmed and like not being able to like store stuff, I now have stuff. This is really unique because I thought it smelled really round rancid, but I guess that's just the way it kind of smells. It still works and it's still fine. So I pulled it out and I was like, I mean, it kind of smells like a coconut oil type of thing, but it's not bad. It just smells like oiliness, like a really oily concoction. So yeah, it just smells like oil. I don't know. I think I'm going to keep it for now. Plus it was $26. Like it's magnetic. It's the eye polish from RMS. So 
This I featured on my channel not that long ago. I used it, so I'm good with that. But let me go ahead and swatch it for you guys. So this is kind of supposed to be a, a and originally I intended it to be a swatch party. Got it from um, got it from uh, BoxyCharm, the friends and family sale. So it was I don't know three to six dollars maybe. This is a backup of Milk Makeup. I got this free from like Sephora or Ulta's you know, gift, birthday gift thing. So I got this. You know what? I'll go ahead and put this in to my, you know, to use up. I don't really use primers. I just use my SPF, but you know, I don't mind. And this is a backup. I already have one of these open. So, I mean, I use it uh, probably not as quickly as I'd love because I have a lot of blushes, even for not being a blush person. This is Max Satin Taupe. It's pretty. Um, this is a good one and done shade. I should have featured it on my channel at one point. Well, here you are, folks. It's a great one and done. Um, reminds me of Natasha Denona Vintage. It reminds me of <laughs> Makeup Geeks Mesmerized. It's a little deeper, though, and less shimmery. Then also from Sydney Grace, it reminds me of Paris. So there you go. <laughs> that should have been a video, but now it's basically in a declutter. <laughs> This is Max uh, Copper Couture. It's a dazzle eyeshadow. I kind of wanted to keep this as a reference. Um, it's very foiled. Wow. It reminds me of Sydney Grace's Blaze. I ought to just grab that shadow. Do I have it over here? I have some Sydney Grace. You know what? Sometime I'll just like make a shorts video. I use these all the time. I love to put them in my shop, my stash. So definitely going to hang on to them. Do we want to see swatches? I mean, we can. I, I think I've already swatched some of these in my sparkly um, video. So I'll go ahead and link that up above if it's not already aired. Because I did film this as like a sparkly eye topper shadow, celestial, glassy, wet looking, that kind of thing. Um, so they're already swatched in there. But if you want to see another swatch, there you go. And then I also, um, I've already done the Jaclyn Hill ones in that video as well. So I will link that if it's not already playing or I'll come back and link it, I guess. Um, so that way you guys can have it. These are all my Sephora's. Ooh. This is colorful. I should show you guys how to open these. So there's two ways to open them. There's the first way is just regular over, you know, this is chalk shock. And then there's another way that you can open them. See it down here? I don't know if you can see it or not. You hold down and then pull and then this. It, this does not tell you the name of the shadow though. It only tells you what, 08? And that's not even the, oh yeah it is, 08. Chalk shock. So just to be mindful, like it's not gonna give you the shade name. Don't ask me why. I'm probably going to have to make a new label for it because that really kind of drives me nuts. People are going to be asking, what shadow is that? And you're not even going to know what the name of it is. There's Mirage. It's kind of a duochrome one. One that I didn't um, swatch in my glittery, colorful, sparkly, toppery video is To the Moon and Back. No, 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 no. That is one. Well, it should have been. It may not have been now. Because I did film it already, so. Sorry, sorry if it didn't make it in. That should have probably made it in. Mystic Queen? Is that the one I'm thinking of? No. This is just like a shimmer. It's from the Colorful. That's pretty, but that's not the one I'm thinking of. And then there's the Metal Effects one. Ooh, let's get it. It's a like a Texture Tuesday type of shadow. Um, here it is. It's glitter. It's called unicorn dust. There we go. I was like, it's just like it, but it's, it's not. Okay. Doesn't look like much until you swatch it out and then it's like super cool. See that? It's super pretty. And it is kind of like a sheer toppery type of shade almost. And then of course you've got this. Right there. That another texture Tuesday. Looky, looky. 
Man, I wish I could attach this onto my camera and use it as like a macro lens. Is that like a macro lens? <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> oh, the funny stuff I think of. Okay. I've got a couple of cream shadows here. I did use them for my Patrick Ta Major Dimension 2. And I don't say I reach for them too terribly often. But when I do, I mean like this is all I've got. So if I'm going to reach for one, this is what I would reach for. So I feel pretty confident that I probably want to keep it. And this is my MAC Painterly Paint Pot. I need to go back to using it because I think it might be drying out by now. Oh, well, it might be done for. Is she done for, I think. How would I get that back? Is there a way to? Leave a comment down below if there is. If not, I think I might just have to get rid of it. You know, I used the majority of it up. Would I say I used $22 worth? No, probably not. That's how much I paid for it when I got it. But, you know, I used enough. This is Ritz, and this is uh, Fine Pearl. I don't know if this... Oh, yeah, this was this was swatched. It's fine pearl. It's cute. Um, really nice. These two should have been swatched in my um, sparkly topper shades, but this is nude. It's a nude topper from Natasha Denona, and this is that duochrome. I really need to repress that in there, don't I? It's pretty. Those are all keepers. These are my singles. Well, this is from Poudayer, a brand called... KK or Kaka Shadow, Kaka Show, and this is my Moon Dust. This is, you know, Space Cowboy. I reach for this probably the most right next to Ritz. And this is my extra Ritz. I accidentally ordered two. So that's a spare Ritz. This right here. Hmm. I, this is the only shadow that I have that's like this. And it is still creamy to this day. And I've had it probably for like maybe two or three years. It is actually pretty and it's what I use as a black base. If I don't want like a black black base from like a gel liner, I will just use this. So I'm going to keep it because I don't have anything else like it. That's what I have. These, these shadows right here. I think I'm going to let them go. They don't stay on my lid. They don't. You know, I think these were already in a declutter and I just must have never like decluttered them well they're they're in the trash now I must have like put them on the chopping block and they made it through or something but see I have the Bobby Brown one here let me show you and it works really good there see that that works really good and it's the same as this one right here it's just better I don't know why I kept them. I thought I decluttered them already. I'm, I'm surprised I didn't. So there we go. Okay, I'm going to go ahead, get my hands all washed up, come back, and I will show you guys the finished kind of like everything orderly now. Okay, we are back. It's the next day. You probably don't notice, but I went ahead. I, uh, I finished up for the day. I was pretty much done putting in my time. So I'm finishing today. I think, um, getting everything pretty much condensed to one drawer has been quite nice. I think I will find an empty magnetic palette for these and then I will go ahead and put them in here along with my some of my other blushes. I think I'm going to put my blush collection in here and then we will be good to go. So thank you so much for watching and I hope you all enjoyed this episode of like swatching, a little mini declutter. It was basically just cleaning it out and I guess it means when you clean things out, you do need to get rid of things. So Thanks so much for watching, guys. I can't wait to see you in my next video. Bye.